now what i want to do is purely mathematical formulation of the problem right it is basically something to show that if you really want to get an optimal schedule right you want to solve the problem perfectly there is one way by which you can go around trying to solve that problem right it uses a concept called linear programming right and what is linear programming essentially it refers to a set of linear constraints right constraints of this form x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to 5 basically x1 x2 x3 are some variables right so x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to 5 or a linear combination 2x3 plus 7x5 minus 4x4 greater than or equal to 2 right all of these are so called linear constraints right and we have some kind of a cost function which is also some linear combination of these variables x1 x2 x3 okay now linear programming by itself is a solvable problem what i mean by solvable is there are actually known algorithms that will give you optimal solutions right the problem is in our case we have a slightly more complicated problem right which the complication is the fact that all the variables the x1 x2 x3 must be integers okay why i'll get to that in a moment okay but this makes a huge difference right even though the regular linear programming where i give some constraints and i give a cost all of which are some linear functions of some variables right i can solve that optimally it turns out that the moment i put this constraint saying that you know those variables or even if i say some of them some of the variables must be integers the problem becomes dramatically more difficult in fact it becomes an np hard problem okay just like the subset sum problem and so on it becomes very difficult to solve for larger and larger numbers of variables okay but what has all this got to do with scheduling what we have is a set of tasks right and dependencies between tasks so unlike the bag of tasks that i started with this actually has dependencies okay but i am going to assume that i am only going to deal with an acyclic graph okay now what does that mean it basically means that you know i could have something like uh, iir filters where actually speaking the signal flow graph has cycles right what i am going to do is any time that there is such a delay or a uh, uh, edge with a token on it initial value token i will break those edges and convert them into an equivalent acyclic graph okay you remember what we did in the case of the differential equation solver we did pretty much that right because we actually had these dependencies that the output xl ul yl are used in the next clock cycle so there is actually a feedback edge going over there but what i said is every edge that has feedback like that i will just cut it right and i will generate a new acyclic graph this one is guaranteed to be acyclic because it cannot have an edge with a with a delay on it okay and if i have a cycle without any delays on that cycle there is a problem right that's like a combinatorial loop i cannot have such systems in my uh, task graphs now i'm also going to assume that the delay of each task is a integer in fact i can you know sort of assume that it's a small integer but i small or not uh, it doesn't really matter the problem formulation is the same and what that means is that the time step at which i need to schedule each task over here is now going to be some integer value okay now given all of this right tasks which have integer delays and dependencies between the tasks i'm giving you one more thing which is a resource constraint saying the number of processors that you can use is limited okay and your goal is to minimize the latency of finishing all the operations subject to all the dependencies that we have an example of a task graph would look something like this right this is a random task graph it is not really related to the differential equation or anything right so there are a few tasks over here v1 v2 etc what i am going to do is introduce one dummy node over there in this case i have called it v6 which is the sink right and the reason for having this dummy node is so that i have only one termination point for the entire task graph otherwise what i would find is v4 and v5 are separately you know they show up as things that oh this is the last node in the graph right all i'm saying is i'll put one dummy node v6 which is a sink which says okay v4 has finished v5 has finished only now v6 uh says that you know the entire graph is over 
right? So the execution time of v6 is probably zero, right? It is just there as a sort of synchronizing uh, element between all the other tasks. Each of these elements has some delay associated with it, d1, d2, etc. And what we need to do is to find this mapping, right? This is a function, phi is a function from tasks to integers, right? These are basically the time steps, right? And what we are saying is this ti is going to be the starting time. Start of operation vi, okay? And the dependencies are going to be captured by this uh, inequality, right? Ti is greater than or equal to tj plus dj if there is an edge from vj to vi in the edge set of this graph. Okay, and now this expression that we have over here is a little bit tricky, right? Basically what it says is, let's look at the right hand side of this first, right? Consider or rather let's look at this entire set notation and say, consider each vertex or each task. What is the type of the task, right? So in other words, is vi such that t of vi equal to k is collecting all the tasks of a given type. Okay. And this is finding all tasks that are active at time L. Right. In other words, either it started before L and has not yet completed at time L. Okay. So what is this overall set? doing it is finding the total set of tasks of type k that are active at time l right and what we are saying is this must be less than or equal to some number a k that is the resource constraint okay so this is a way by which i can formulate something called a resource constraint scheduling problem right i am basically converted it into this problem of finding this integer mapping phi from each for each task i need to assign one integer such that each of those dependencies is satisfied and this resource constraint is satisfied right those are my linear constraints that i need to be worried about and finally the tn that is to say the time of that last node that sync node the starting time which is also its finishing time because its delay is zero right so tn must be as small as possible okay so that is sort of like saying i have a set of tasks I have a limited amount of resources. I want to put those tasks onto those resources such that they all the all of the tasks together, that is the last one of those tasks, finishes at the earliest possible time. Okay, that is resource constrained minimum latency scheduling. Right? How would we go about solving this problem? Right? How do how do we make it into this linear program that I was talking about? Right? For that, there is some quite interesting mathematical tricks that are employed, right? One of them is this concept of something called an indicator variable. This idea of using indicator variables in order to convert a problem of one type into another mathematical formulation is a very useful trick. With that in mind, essentially what I'm saying is, let's take some timeline, right? Starting at zero and going up to some upper bound L. Right? And I basically break it up into small time units, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, etc. Right? And what I'm saying is that I could basically say, let's say that this was uh, position number seven or something like that, right? X one seven equal to one implies task one starts at time seven. Okay. And that's it, that x1, anything else will be equal to 0. So x1, 7 alone will be equal to 1 and x1, anything else will be equal to 0. Okay. So if I assume that there is this upper time limit L, right? how do I find out at which time instant V1 has got scheduled? This expression gives me that. Right? I basically take 
time step 1 into x11 okay if x11 was equal to 0 then that particular value would become equal to 1 and it would basically pick up the value l equal to 1 l equal to 0 in this case x10 means l equal to 0 it would have picked up but in this case what i'll find is this summation will basically become 7 into x17 which is equal to 1 which means that this summation will be equal to the value of 7 so i'll get t1 is equal to 7 okay so this idea of an indicator variable is a nice trick it's not just something that is applied purely in the context of scheduling it can be used even in other places in order to convert something into a set of you know linear constraints or something of that sort and make it solvable right now we can go further with that right i am going to run through this part a little bit fast but like i said you know i'm not expecting you to learn this entire process by heart you can take your time go back over it look at it the main thing that i wanted to convey was that concept of indicator variables and how it can be used to convert that scheduling problem into an integer linear programming problem okay so what we have over here is you know the dependencies what were the dependencies ti must be greater than or equal to tj plus dj if the edge vj vi is present in the graph right so what does that mean i basically write out an expression for ti uh, tj right uh, yeah or rather ti and a similar expression for tj and i get ti minus tj greater than or equal to dj right so now what do I have? I'm basically uh, saying that these are all my variables. These are all constants, right? Which means that I dj is also a constant. So I end up with a linear constraint, okay? One set of linear constraints which capture all the dependencies, okay? So I'm sort of getting there in the process of converting my scheduling problem, problem into a linear programming problem. Similarly, I need to do a resource constraint. And the question that I need to answer is, does operation i start at time l? Okay. So for that, let's take some time steps. Right. This is time l. This is l minus 1, l minus 2, l minus 3, or rather l plus 1, l plus 2, and so on. Okay. And what if operation i basically went something like this? Okay. This says I starts at L implies X I L equal to one. Right. But what, what if it started anywhere before that, right? All that I really need to say over here is, is the operation I running at time L. Okay. When would it be running at time L? It could either have started at L or it could have started at L minus 1 or it could have started at L minus 2 because it has basically this three time steps, right? L minus 2, L minus 1 or at L, right? These are the three options that I have, which is basically what I'm capturing over here. I start from L minus 2, L minus 1 up to L. At any one of these points, if the operation started, right, I'll say that it is actually running at time L. Okay. Now, the good part is I have managed to write the question of is an operation running at time L once again as some summation, which means that I can do another summation over all operations of type K, right, at a time L, at a given time L, and say for each and every time instant L, this condition must be satisfied, right, for each and every time instant L and for each resource type K, okay. You are probably thinking, I mean, isn't this a very large number of constraints? If so, you are absolutely right, okay. So I'm not trying to sort of say that this is an easy solution. In fact, what is ending up happening is I'm creating a huge number of linear constraints and in fact, the number of variables also is pretty large, right. There is one Xij for each time instant and for each operation that needs to be scheduled, right? So it is number of operations into number of time instants, the number of variables that I have, 
okay so on the other hand what i have done is i have managed to get the overall ilp formulation as something like this right every operation must start at exactly one time instant that is the same as saying that when i take the summation of the xil for a given operation over all possible time instants it must be exactly equal to 1 it cannot be zero which means that the operation never started it cannot be more than 1 which means it was started in more than one clock cycle okay the dependency constraints and resource constraints we just looked at earlier and our objective is now to minimize this starting time of the last node in the operation right so this is minimize latency subject to all the resource constraints and dependencies so like i said the main reason i brought this up was more than uh, sort of you know saying that okay you need to know how to do this conversion to a ilp it was more to sort of bring out that you know there are interesting ways by which you can actually take a problem that is in one domain and cast it into something which is a different kind of problem and very often that can sometimes help you in terms of solving the original problem more efficiently in this case of course unfortunately what happens is integer linear programming itself is np hard right and in fact it is hard even for tens of variables let alone hundreds okay but on the other hand there are very good heuristic solvers that are available for this which means that there are actually situations where people try and use this kind of integer linear programming approach in order to solve the overall scheduling problem 